Hello YouTube, this is Firewalker responding to State of Daniel's video, Why Support Israel. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this video up and running. I was doing some research and development for my previous video, Israel is not the victim. But I wanted to respond to uh, State of Daniel's upload specifically because I couldn't fit it into my previous video and I thought it, it required a little bit more attention than I could deliver in the last one. So my last upload is going to go hand in hand with this one. It provides some background and history, etc. that I am going to use to make my argument. Please reference that video linked down below as well as State of Daniel's original video also linked down below. Let's get started. Hey YouTube, I hope that all is going well. No matter where you are politically, it's probably a safe bet that you want world peace. No one wants war, and no one wants bloodshed. Unless we're playing Call of Duty on my Xbox and I want you to die, 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 die! Okay, seriously though, all kidding aside, of course we all want world peace. But it's strange that no one today is talking about the anti-Semitism that's still flourishing around the world. Everyone talks about ending wars, but no one ever talks about the people that want to destroy the state of Israel. Even Hollywood, which is politically outspoken, has been alarmingly quiet during the Gaza conflict, despite all the industry bigwigs that support Israel. Well, maybe people will start defending Israel a little bit more when they make their actions something worth defending, instead of killing 70, instead of 70 percent of the people they're killing being Palestinian civilians who are just trying to find a way to survive. I mean, can you imagine what would happen if just five missiles were launched from Mexico into Texas or Canada into New York? It would be a full-scale war. Can anyone say Canadian bacon? Look, we'd flat out demolish anyone who dared attack us. If anything, it's amazing that Israel is showing so much restraint during this conflict. It's not really that amazing considering how many nations, nearby nations, would be very upset if Israel were to simply wipe out the Palestinian people. I don't even think the U.S. would stand by them if they did that. Showing restraint is really their only option, and I would hardly even say they've done that. They didn't start it, but they damn sure have the right to defend themselves. Israel was attacked, and it defended itself. I don't understand why everyone is up in arms over this. Somehow, people are trying to blame Israel for this conflict. That would be like blaming the existence of African Americans for racial tensions in America. Since when was victim blaming okay? One, I'm curious to know where you got the idea that Israel didn't start it. They have been expanding their borders ever since they got the land. They have been oppressing the Palestinian people to the point where there's 40% unemployment in Gaza compared to the 13.5% unemployment in the U.S. during the 08 recession that everyone got so freaked out about jobs in. 13.5 versus 40%. Four in ten people can't find a job because they can't get across the borders to be able to get to the jobs. And there's a they've erected a full blockade. They can't even they even have problems getting access to humanitarian aid. When you create situations where people are so desperate, how can you not expect extremist factions to rise to power? Two, Israel has the right to defend their land. I am willing to support that. I think that is definitely a true statement. But where that causes me a problem is when they're no longer just defending their land, but expanding it. That's where the issue truly lies. At least from my point of view, we have the Palestinian, some of the Palestinian people, like the PLO, who don't think that Israel has the right to the land at all. And then, of course, there are the, the Israeli people who don't recognize that uh, Palestine as a nation, so they just go around not recognizing each other. What you see is that Hamas and the PLO are treating Israel like Israel is treating them. They're not treating other people the way they would like to be treated. They're not just defending their land. Their land has been expanding ever since 1949. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they keep pushing the Palestinian people further and further and further away. Their land is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're not just defending their land. They're taking over the entire goddamn region.
I think the reason people aren't defending Israel is because of the biased media coverage and because of the great propaganda war that Hamas has been waging. You know, we saw earlier this month as the mainstream networks condemned Israel for attacking a school in Gaza, but they all failed to cover the fact that Hamas was hiding rockets inside. Even the UN was allegedly aware that Hamas was using schools to hide weapons. Israel uses its rockets to defend its people, while Hamas uses its people to defend its rockets. Well, Israel certainly doesn't get hung up over the Palestinian civilian death toll now, do they? Hamas deliberately targets civilians. They even use suicide bombers. Yes, absolutely. They are not a good group. Okay, but Israel specifically targets Hamas, but they don't really care if Palestinian civilians get in the way either. 70% of the deaths in this war between Israel and whomever feels like Israel needs to get out of there, right now Hamas, um, 70% of it is Palestinian civilians. 70%! So Israel certainly isn't trying to avoid Palestinian civilian deaths now, do they? Um, as long as they get the bad guys, hey, the ends justify the means, including bombing a school. Yes, people tend to be a little bit upset when Israel goes blowing up schools. We tend to be a little bit protective of children. We need to shift our criticism from the Israeli soldiers who face the terrible choice of firing and possibly hitting human shields or sitting back and watching their loved ones die. We need to shift the criticism from these Israeli soldiers to the terrorists that are using their children as pawns in this conflict. Actually, I'd like to think that we can be skeptical and critical of both groups because there tends to not be only one group who's fault everything is. You'll see that in counseling, you'll see that in psychology, you'll see that basically in any conflict management thing ever, that both sides have done something to continue the conflict. And in this case, Israel's oppression of the Palestinian people plays a huge part in Hamas coming into power in 2006 at all. If it weren't for that fact, I doubt they would have come into power. If Israel hadn't created such a desperate situation, why can't we be critical of both? Do we really have to, to think that Israel is entirely right in this and is entirely the victim? Do you really think they've done nothing wrong in this war that the Palestinian people have no reason to be upset? Good luck with that. Israel will continue to lose the PR war until people realize that Hamas is a terrorist organization with a humanitarian face. And if you don't like that description of it, well, those aren't my words, those are the words of Mossab Hassan Youssef, the son of the founder of Hamas. On CNN, Youssef even confirmed that Hamas uses its citizens as tools of war. Hamas does not care about the lives of uh, uh, Palestinians, does not care about the lives of Israelis or Americans. Mm -hmm. They don't care about their own lives. Uh, they consider uh, dying for the sake of uh, their ideology a, a way of worship. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can you continue uh, in that uh, uh, society? Hamas is not seeking coexistence and uh, uh, compromise. Hamas is seeking uh, conquest and uh, taken over. The reason people are even fired up about this in the first place is the false perception, the asinine perception, that Israel deliberately wants to kill innocent citizens. No, actually people are all fired up about this because Israel is not going out of its way to try to save innocent civilians either. We get fired up about it because they bombed a school with children, a school. We get fired up about this because the, even though they're not succeeding necessarily in killing mass amounts of Palestinian people, they are succeeding in making life truly miserable. People can't find shelter, can't find food, can't get a job, can't get humanitarian supplies. You know, there's a, there are much slower, more painful ways to kill people than bombs. Now ask yourself this, why in the world would Israel want to deliberately or even sloppily kill citizens? Even the Huffington Post gets this. 
If Israel wanted to kill citizens, it's doing a pretty lousy job. Terrorist organizations such as ISIS killed more citizens in two days than Israel killed in this entire conflict. Israel has advanced weaponry, a nuclear arsenal, and U.S. support. If it really wanted to destroy Gaza, Gaza would be destroyed. Gaza was never in danger. Israel is the one still in danger, even after this successful operation. Gaza was never in danger. Gaza was never in danger. Not in danger? Not in danger. What exactly do you think not in danger means? According to Gaza's health ministry officials, ever since the most recent conflict began in July, the death rate, the death toll has risen to 1,766 Palestinians and another 9,320 people injured. Among those killed were 398 children, 209 women, and 74 elderly men. There were, wait, on the other side we have 64 Israeli soldiers and three Israeli civilians killed on the Israeli side. Meanwhile, more than 255,000 Palestinians were displaced in the conflict. Try telling them Gaza isn't in any danger or was never in any danger. Try telling the families whose loved ones that were lost that they weren't in any danger. Try telling that little baby who was born from C-section after his mother died in the blast that Gaza was never in any danger and now he has to grow up without a mom. I don't know where exactly you think you get off saying that. I don't know what you think no danger is, but if I were in that much no danger, I'd be dead. You know, we now know that there are maybe 3,000 Hamas soldiers who are ready to commit suicide attacks just to win this war. We know that these extremists hate us and our allies and our way of life. طول شش ماه آینده ما با تحریم ها فشار رو به اقتصاد ایران ادامه می دهیم نمی گذاریم اقتصاد ایران بهبود یابد to solve a problem, you would better know the source of a problem. I could not agree more. So tell me, Daniel, is Canaan far enough back for you? When Israel, after wandering in the desert, waltzes into Canaan and says, hey, God gave us this land. The God that you don't believe in told us that we now own this land. And if you don't give it to us, then we're going to just take it because God is on our side. Tell me, how exactly do you think we, the U.S., would respond if someone just waltzed in and said God had given them this land? Not very well. So, you, As you can imagine, the Canaanites weren't too much fans of that either. That's where it all began. That's as far back as I've traced it so far. Is that far enough back for you, Daniel? Because after that, if we fast forward to 1917 after... The land comes under British control. We have the Balfour Declaration promising two states, Palestine and Israel, and both would have a chance of self-government. That is nothing like what this looks like now. If we're still tracing the problem back, then we see from there that Palestine gets a little bit more land. Then they fight over it. Then Israel, Six Days War, takes over more land and more land and more land and more land. You can see from the map I, I posted earlier in the video. So exactly how far back into the problem are you looking? Israel did nothing wrong in defending itself. Again with the self-defense argument. Where does self-defense stop? and aggression begin. Even in U.S. law, there is only a certain point to which you can call an act self-defense. If you use means more than necessary, if you kill somebody 
when they were running away and you were no longer in danger, that's not self-defense anymore in U.S. American law. So at which point do you think that Israel is no longer defending themselves and are now oppressing the Palestinian people? Is that unemployment rate 80% instead of 40, 100%? Or are you going to wait until the entire Palestinian people are wiped out before you're satisfied with Israel's self-defense? Sure, Israel might not be winning the war of public opinion around the world, but it's got bigger issues on its plate, such as fighting for its survival, and people have got to understand that. Anti-Semitism has got to stop. You know what else has to stop? Victim blaming. Like you said earlier, when has victim blaming ever been okay? It's not. So why are you blaming the victims, the Palestinian people, whose blood is paying for this war on both sides? When did it become okay to blame them? Anti-Semitism has to stop, but so does the oppression of the Palestinian people. The anti-Semitism can stop when Israel starts acting in a way that is respectable and worthy of our respect and worthy of our defense. Anti-Semitism can stop when they start treating the Palestinian people like equals, not lesser than. It can stop when people like you stop making excuses for them and actually hold them accountable for their actions. Thank you for watching. This is Firewalker saying like, comment, subscribe, and see the links down below. I'll see you guys next time when I will be discussing the Mahana versus U.S. case involving the First Amendment and terrorism.